All right, Steve. Mm -hmm. There are people out in the world right now that are drinking something called raw milk. Mm -hmm. It's unpasteurized, right? That's right. Meaning that they don't boil it and kill all the germs. Yeah, you don't boil milk anyway to pasteurize it. What do you do? Well, they flash heat it. You know, they heat it up to, say, 260 degrees for 15 minutes, and then they cool it back down um, to, like, refrigerator temperature, and that's it, you know. But there's three levels that you could do pasteurization, ultra-pasteurization, which is a little bit more temperature, and then the super-ultra-pasteurization. But those are all not only how much you heat it, but then you have to, like, seal it in a sterile, you know, steel uh, container. And so it just extends the shelf life longer. Um, but there, the, the reason why I bring it up, though, is from what I've read, Yeah, drinking raw milk is dangerous. Of course it is. There's a reason why we pasteurize milk. Uh, before pasteurization, milk was a significant source of human foodborne infections. 25% of, foo of yeah. foodborne infections came from milk. After pasteurization, it's less than 1%. Like it virtually eliminated food, uh, uh, milk as a source of bacterial infection. The, the purpose of it is to kill the pathogenic bacteria, the bacteria that are in there that can cause infections. Now, is that bacteria coming from the inside of the cow, or is it coming from like, feces outside it's of the cow? It's everything. Yeah, it's everything. So um, probably most of it is contaminations outside the udder, you know, but, you know, it's bacteria is everywhere. So even, you can minimize it with good practice, you know, good farming practice, and um, some farmers who do produce raw milk for consumption you do try to be very sterile in their process to minimize contamination, but it's not enough. The bacteria still gets in there. Well, there, but there's there's bacteria virtually everywhere. Yeah, like on on every surface, everywhere. That's why once you crack the seal on the milk, no matter how pasteurized it is, you got ten days to to, to eleven days to drink it. Right. Because it's going to start you know getting bacteria just from the environment. So. What's the worst thing that can happen to you? You, you, drink you can raw get, milk. you could die. I mean, you can get a, a bacterial infections are no joke. So, uh, you know, the, the some infections could just be like you have an upset stomach for a week, you know, or whatever. Uh, but they could be bad enough, you know, that they could be life threatening. And, and even if it doesn't kill you, like, what would it give you, like a horrible GI experience? Yeah, you probably have a horrible GI experience. Coming out good both way ends, right? To put to it. <laughs> right. There's also recent studies which show that the bacteria that you find in raw milk have a lot of antibiotic-resistant genes. And you don't, there, we haven't completed the research to show that there is an actual health risk to that. But still, as a, just as a general principle, you don't want to be spreading and consuming highly antibiotic resistant bacteria because bacteria can share those genes with other bacteria. You don't want to be putting them into your body. Wow. Yeah. So you're introducing bacterial resistance potentially. Wow. That sounds, yeah. that sounds so, terrible. But the big risk is from direct infection. Now, why would people do this? Yeah. Why right? are people drinking yeah. raw milk? Because they, they have some false beliefs about it. There are false claims about it. One is that it's more nutritious, you know, that the pasteurization process destroys some of the nutrition and that's just not true for most things uh, the only nutrient where there's like a significant decrease with the pasteurization is thiamine you know just one of the many vitamins um, but milk is not a significant source of thiamine in your diet it doesn't even crack the top 10 so if you eat fruits and vegetables and even meat you'll get plenty of thiamine that's only something to even think about if someone is existing on milk as their only food source, then, yeah. of course, you need to know everything that's in there and, and being deficient in one vitamin could be a problem. But that's like, so if you're not living on milk, don't worry about it. It's not even an issue. Otherwise, there's no significant alteration in macronutrients or micronutrients. So it's, it's simply not true. There's no effect on your overall nutrition from drinking pasteurized versus raw milk. Yeah, there's like bodybuilders that are, you know, saying you got to drink raw milk. Now, the thing They're is, into a lot of stuff. you're drinking raw milk, you're drinking like more than whole milk. Mm -hmm. It's even it's even more whole than whole milk, right? It's got more fat in it. No, the only difference, no, there's no no difference There's no fat. difference. All right, but it's no difference it in is, macronutrients. It's whole milk. It's yes. It's but, so the but that's a separate process. It doesn't have to be. You could theoretically homogenize it or do fat reduction on it, but without ever doing the pasteurization, it just means it's not pasteurized. Oh, okay, I thought that whole it milk typically had is, a little bit of the, the some of the fats taken off, but I guess they're leaving it all in. 
Yeah, yes, yeah, they, they, there's. It's basically. They, they, I think you're thinking of the homogenization, where they get it to all mixed together. So that's like the cream doesn't float on top. It's right. all. It's all mixed together. But in the end, like you know, adults drinking whole milk, not a good, not a good food choice. I mean, it depends on how much you're drinking, and you know wh- what your dietary needs are. You know what your issues are in terms of caloric intake, et cetera. But it's not bad to drink milk. It, it's fine. Um, the other two other claims they make for the raw milk. One is it tastes better. Mm-hmm. It's totally subjective, and there's like no way to really resolve that, you know, unless you do a blinded test, which there really isn't a lot out there. So that one is like whatever you drink, whatever you feel tastes better, but you can't claim it tastes better. Like you have, that's a positive claim that they have not established. It's just subjective. That's it's it. it's completely yeah. subjective. And then the third thing is that it has probiotics in it. That has been studied. Now probiotics are bacteria that are that are good for you because they are benign bacteria that live in your in your gut, your mm-hmm. in your GI system. Uh, so a couple problems with that. One is they don't have probiotics. <laughs> People yep. have tested the milk. Like, yeah, the bacteria that are in milk, in raw milk, are not the probiotic bacteria. So that there, it, it, so that's a claim is just wrong. And also routine use of probiotics is also there's no evidence that it's beneficial anyway. Yeah. So even if it did, so what? It's not hasn't been proven to be effective. So that's a complicated question medically, but the bottom line is, you know, just for most probiotics out there for most people, most of the time there's really no benefit. There may be exceptions to it, but you know, the research is still looking to that. Uh, but in any case the raw milk doesn't have it in there anyway. So it's not more nutritious. It doesn't have probiotics. Taste is subjective. There's really no proven benefit to it, but there is proven risk. So it's risk with very dubious benefit, and it's just no reason for it. All right, so don't drink raw milk. Do not drink raw milk, absolutely.